Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. I am back with another monthly book haul. So this is my haul for all the books that I got back in March. It's another big book haul as usual. I think there are over 50 books here. I bought a lot of books. I bought a lot of special editions. For some reason there's a ton of book boxes nowadays and I just want everything. So I have a lot of special editions that I got from last month to show you. And I got some very very exciting arcs from some publishers that I do need to read. First off I'm I'm gonna start off with some boxes that I got from Hello Lovely Box. They came out with their Viscount box because Bridgerton season 2 finally came out and there were some really really cute things in this box. There was this adorable sleep shirt. It says Dreaming of a Viscount with an adorable corgi on it. I love their sleep shirts. I'm currently wearing one right now because I was kind of lazy to dress up today but sleep shirts from Hello Lovely Box are literally what I live in. There's also this pillowcase. It says Let's Swoon. The cute cutest little tiara. There's a face mask, fuzzy socks, and a chapstick, a tea bag, and some candy. So that was their cute little Bridgerton inspired box. I also got their spring bouquet box with two special edition books. Their spring featured author was Gianna Darling and this was the featured author with the exclusive cover. It's Welcome to the Dark Side. It's part of our MC series, the Fallen Men series, and I think this one is a lot of people's favorite. It's got a very very big age gap. The heroine's a good girl and the hero is the president of an MC. So this is what it looks like, the special edition cover. The bouquet box also comes with a mystery author and I've been so excited for everyone to get it and to see who it is because she is a pretty popular author, at least recently she is, and it is Savage Lover by Sophie Lark. I haven't read this one though. I have read Welcome to the Dark Side, but this one is book three, the third standalone in her Brutal Birthright series. I've only read book one, but I do love that it's a girl cover all the covers in that series, the original covers, all have guys. I have no idea what this one's about but it looks like it is Nero's book and he was one of the brothers that I read about in book one. But I do love that this season's box was like girl cover themed and it did come with some special goodies. There was a compact mirror, it says good times guaranteed. A fanny pack which I kind of love, it says break rules, read books, stay wild. An art print based off the Gianna Darling book. Some word magnets, there's this keychain a whiskey scented soap bar, a skeleton book band bookmark, and some chapstick. There's this journal that says happily ever after or else. And every box comes with two ebook codes. This one is for Greed by Eva Charles and this is Sins of the Syndicate by Lexi James. I also had to get last season's winter box from Hello Lovely Box. The featured author was Christina C. Jones and this is the exclusive cover for The Culmination of Everything which I have not read yet. This one is part of our Sugar Valley series and I have literally no idea idea what this one's about again because the blurb has two lines. And if that wasn't enough from Hello Lovely Box, they also recently launched a new box called the Trope Box, Trope of the Month Box. Each month comes with a special edition book and it's based off the trope of that month. The March box was for a sports romance and the book, the exclusive book, was Tutoring the Player by Rebecca Jenshack. I've never read her before but this one does sound really really cute. It's noodle, college sports romance with a hockey player hero and the heroine who needs to tutor him. This is what the adorable cover looks like so if you love illustrated covers this month was for you. They're not all gonna be illustrated though I don't believe. The April trope is for Age Gap. It's a forbidden royal romance and it's one of my favorite books by this author. I actually do have it on my shelves right now if you can try to guess what it is. And the trope for May is a mafia romance and I have read and really enjoyed the book too. I have gotten a sneak peek of the these covers and I am obsessed with them, especially the Mafia Romance one. Unfortunately the boxes are currently sold out but spots do open up like towards the beginning of the month because that's when renewals happen so people will drop their subscriptions and then you can snag yourself a box if they do. So keep an eye out if you are interested in these Trope of the Month boxes. I do have a discount code in my description if you want to use it. I decided to try a new box last month for the very first time. It's called Dark and Quirky. The March theme was for Mafia 
mafia romances so obviously I couldn't pass it up. There are four books in each box in the big boxes but I kind of got rid of two of them from March already because I knew I wasn't gonna read them. The ones I kept were these two with the exclusive covers. This is Empire of Sin by Rena Kent which I have not read. I'll admit I haven't had the best luck with her books but the series that this is in does sound really really good. This one is a dark office romance. The hero is the heroine's boss which I am always a freaking sucker for. Also the cover is so so pretty and the other gorgeous cover is Machiavellian by Bella de Corte. It's book one in the Gangsters of New York series. I've never read this author before but this one also sounded really good so that's why I kept it. It's got a marriage of convenience which is classic in mafia romances. The hero is the capo of his mafia family and the heroine is homeless so I guess they make a deal with their marriage of convenience. I also really really love this cover too. So those are the two books with the exclusive covers and it also did come with this tote bag. It says beautiful chaos and it also came with a shirt that says mafia romance reader with all four of the featured books in this box. The other authors that I got rid of were Karaduki and Bella Matthews. I've read one book by Karaduki. It was like a co-written book but I just wasn't a fan of it and I've never read Bella Matthews but apparently that cover was an exclusive to this box so you could buy it for like 20 bucks from the author herself but I did really love the dark and quirky exclusive covers the tote bag was really nice and I mean I've subscribed for like two more months so their April author that I was most excited about was Parker S. Huntington. It's got an exclusive gorgeous cover for Darling Venom and then in May there are two authors that I was really looking forward to and that's why I got the subscription. There was both Gianna Darling and Rue Nix. I also couldn't pass up on getting one of my favorite romances, one of my top favorite romances that I read last year in 2021. This is the exclusive cover of The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. The cover is like a reddish pinkish version of the original cover. Just look at how adorable it is. I'm loving the colors and also the edges are sprayed. It's got this bright blue sprayed edges that matches the colors on the cover. This was a special edition from Illumicrate which is the first time I ever bought something from them and the shipping absolutely killed me. It's the most that I've ever spent on a book I think and it was all because of the shipping so I completely understand how international people feel now when they buy books from the U.S. The exclusive hardcover has this gorgeous gold foiling of olive and anum on it and the spine is also gold foiled but I really love it though even though it's very very expensive. It is one of my all-time favorite books so I couldn't not get it and then the rest of the special editions I got these secondhand because they were from some previous boxes. This is the exclusive edition of Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin which I also loved last year. It was from the Dangerous Romance box last year. I totally missed it though but I ended up buying it from one of my viewers from Caitlin. The cover is very very on the nose because yes it is a priest romance. It's gorgeous though. I love the book and I love the cover. It was one of my favorites from last year. It's like this forbidden age gap romance, teacher student romance, and of course the hero is a priest. I mean if you've read Pam Godwin before you know how taboo she can get but I do love her so I'm very very happy to get this. And this last special edition set I was so freaking excited about. I was so happy that I was able to trade for it. It's the Illumicrate special edition TJ Clean set. So these are the special editions of The House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door which I both love. The House in the Cerulean Sea has these gorgeous sprayed edges that matches the colors on the cover. I am so so obsessed with this. Under the Whispering Door also has some matching sprayed edges. Got some trees to match the cover. Here's like a closer look of these beautiful sprayed edges. There are also some pretty end pages. This is Under the Whispering Door and this is the end pages for House in the Cerulean Sea. But the most amazing thing about the exclusive editions are the naked hardcovers. I am so so obsessed with them. This is what the naked hardcover looks like for House in the Cerulean Sea. Just look how beautiful it is. And this is the stunning naked hardcover of Under the Whispering Door. It even says Sharon's Crossing Tea and Treats on the back. It is so it's so cute. I love these books so so much. TJ Klune is one of my favorites, one of my top favorite authors. So I am very very, very happy to finally have this set. So those were my special editions that I got last month. I spent a lot of money on some of them, but I... 
thought it was worth it. Next, I've got some arcs that I've been dying to read. This one is from one of my favorites. It's Tessa Bailey and her upcoming book, My Killer Vacation. It's like a cozy mystery romance, which I don't think I've ever read before, but I'm so excited about this one. The heroine is an elementary school teacher and the hero is, of all things, a bounty hunter, and they meet while she's on vacation. She finds a corpse in her rental house while on vacation, and she ends up partnering with this bounty hunter to track down the killer. It sounds like so much fun. I got this arc of Starry Eyed Love by Helena Hunting. It's the standalone sequel to When Sparks Fly about the sister from the first book, and it's kind of like an office romance. The heroine, she's trying to land this deal with a company to partner up, and the hero is the owner of that company, and they spend more time together because of their working relationship, but they actually met before. They met at a bar before, but she turned him down, so things are a little messy from that. I got this arc of a historical romance. It's called Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. I love the sound of this one already because the heroine, she is a finishing school teacher by day and a gothic romance author by night. The hero is a widowed duke who needs a wife, and he gets very, very intrigued by this heroine. Ilsa Madame Mill sent me an arc of her latest book, Beauty and the Baller, which is another one of her sports romances. The hero is a former NFL quarterback, the heroine is a former beauty queen, and they have this one night stand together. And then fast forward two years later, and they are new neighbors, except he doesn't remember her at all. My next arc is one that I am very, very excited about because I do love the series. It is A Game of Retribution by Scarlett St. Clair. It's the second book in the Hades saga, and I was also sent the first book, A Game of Fate. The series is basically the hero's point of view, the hero's retelling of the Hades of Persephone series, which was only told in Persephone's point of view. I do love both series though. I really, really liked A Game of Fate. Like Hades' point of view is great, so I'm very excited for the sequel. Another arc that I'm excited for is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. The arc is huge because I think it's supposed to be a hardcover first release. Kind of like The Soulmate Equation, but this one sounds amazing. It's got a second chance romance, which I am always a sucker for, and it's about treasure hunting of all things. The heroine is the daughter of a notorious treasure hunter, and she ends up reuniting with the former love of her life who broke her heart. I'm totally sold on the treasure hunting part, but the fact that it's a second chance romance as well, it sounds perfect for me. Hopefully I do love it though. Hopefully the romance is solid. I also got some more historical romance arcs. This one I actually won from a Goodreads giveaway. It's been a while since that happened, although the last time that I won was also for another historical romance, so maybe Goodreads just knows me too well. But this is How to Be a Wallflower by Eloisa James. It's the first book in her brand new series. The hero is a businessman from America, and the heroine is the granddaughter of an aristocrat, and they become friends. So it's a friends to lovers historical romance. We've also got Clash of the Classes. It sounds great, and I usually enjoy Eloisa James, so I'm excited to get to this one. And the last historical romance arc that I got is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. I recently read the author's first historical romance, so this is their second one. It's a friends to lovers romance, but everyone thinks that the heroine dies, including her best friend, the Duke Hero. She does come back, though, many, many years after the war where she was presumed dead, and I'm just very, very intrigued by this one. I got this arc by a new to me author. It's called As Seen on TV by Meredith Shore or Meredith Score. It's a classic small town romance, kind of hallmarky, because the heroine is this journalist from New York, from the big city. She goes to the small town to write up a story, and also she wants to fall in love in the small town. And this last arc is Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. I believe this is Lucy Score's first time with a publisher. It's like an HGTV romance. The heroine is a house slipper and a YouTuber. She's trying to restore this Victorian mansion, and she falls for a landscaper. I have yet to read Lucy's score though, even though so many people love her. Like she's a really popular author, but she was never on my radar until like this year. So hopefully I do end up liking her. I also got a bunch of other books that some publishers sent me, like this stack from Sourcebooks. I recently did an online event with these four authors just to chat with them, do a Q&A. This is A Most Unusual Duke by Susanna Allen, which is a paranormal historical romance. The hero is a bear shifter. A Relentless Rake by Anna Harrington, which is like romantic suspense and historical romance. The hero is trying to find the person who assassinated the prime minister, and the heroine is trying to clear her brother's name. Fortune Favors the Duke by Kristen Vaden. This is a romance, a historical romance, where the heroine falls for her late fiance's brother, who has become the new duke, and 
it rules for heiresses by Amelie Howard. The heroine is an heiress, the hero is the new duke, and they end up in a marriage of convenience. I also got these two from Sourcebooks. This is Bride for a Day by Carolyn Brown, which has an accidental marriage. And this is a Western historical romance, A Man of Legend by Linda Broday. I was very excited about this one. It is Going Public by Hudson Lin. It's an MM Asian romance, and it's also an office romance between a boss and assistant. I got A Brush with Love by Maisie Eddings. The author is actually a bookstagrammer, a bookstagrammer friend. This is her debut, and it's a romance between dental students. Lauren Kate wrote her very first adult romance. I used to read her Fallen series when I was in middle school and high school. I wasn't like the biggest fan of it, but I still read it. But By Any Other Name is her very first adult romance, and I actually read it last month, and it wasn't too bad. It's a bookish romance between a romance editor heroine and a very mysterious hero who isn't actually that mysterious because you can pretty much guess exactly who he is. And this is Boss Witch by Anne Aguirre. This is the Santa Ellen sequel to Witch Please. It's another witchy paranormal romance rom-com. The heroine is a witch and the hero is a witch hunter. It was sent the newest Black Dagger Brotherhood book, Lover Arisen. I don't even know what book we're on. I think this is 18 or 19, but I am pretty much all caught up. I just need to read this newest one. This is Balthazar's book. I think he's part of the Band of Bastards, but he's currently being possessed by Davina, and the heroine is a human homicide detective. I got A Wedding on Sunshine Corner by Phoebe Mills. It's a small town romance. The heroine runs a preschool, and the hero is her brother's best friend and also the father of one of her students. This is In a New York Minute by Kate Spencer. I've never read her before, but this is a rom-con. The heroine and hero, they have this meet cue, but someone ends up seeing and posting about it all over social media. So these two kind of go viral, but they didn't actually click during their meet cute. They're total opposites, but they do end up falling for each other. I also got this great stack that Berkeley sent me. This is a sequel that I have been dying for. It's For Aunties in a Wedding by Jesse Q. Sutanto. It's a sequel to Dolly for Aunties, and the heroine is now getting married. But of course things go wrong when Medi finds out that her wedding photographer is an assassin. I haven't read it just yet, but I do plan on reading it this month. This is Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter, which I have read. It was actually a really, really cute epistolary romance. The heroine needs a place to stay and ends up rooming with her brother's best friend, who she does not get along with. It's an epistolary romance because the heroine gets some random texts from a stranger. They connect and have these really good conversations through text, but it turns out that the guy that she's been texting, she has no idea that it's her a new roommate and her brother's best friend. I got The League of Gentlewomen Witches by India Holton, which is another one of her historical romances, but with a magical twist. I sadly was not the biggest fan of the author's first book, The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, which was so sad because the book sounded so good. And this one, we have another pirate hero. I don't know, maybe I'll try it in audio and that might make a difference, but I just wasn't a huge fan of the author's writing. This is If You Ask Me by Libby Hubbard. Sure. The heroine is an advice columnist who finds out that her husband has been cheating on her, so she gets his things and burns them. She ends up falling for the firefighter who shows up to clear the fire. And this is Sadie on a Plate by Amanda Elliott, which I have read. Sadly, I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. It's a foodie romance that sounded really cute. The heroine is a new contestant on this cooking TV show, and the hero is one of the judges. And this last Berkeley book I got is the new Christine Feehan. It's Phantom game, which is part of her Ghostwalker series. Christine Feehan has such a gigantic backlist, and I've only read one of them so far. But yes, this is another one of her paranormal romances. And this last book that I got from the publisher is The Sweet Spot by Trish Doller. I'm pretty sure, though, this is more like women's fiction than a romance, just like her last release, Float Plan. But this one's about a single mom who finds a job at a brewery hotel. It's set on a tiny island, and the love interest is like the grumpy hotel owner something like that. I sadly wasn't the biggest fan of Float Plan though, but hopefully I might enjoy this one more. And then I also got a bunch of indie romances last month. These are the ones that the author sent me. I got the alternate edition of Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. I actually won this one in a giveaway. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's one of my favorites from February, I think. Also, the inside is so pretty. But yeah, this one is a very intense romance. It deals with death and suicide and moving on from the loss of a loved one. It's pretty bookish too. Like the heroine works for a literary agency and she ends up finding or given a manuscript by her
her late best friend from high school who committed suicide. She ends up falling for his older brother, so there's a slight age gap, but it was a very, very emotional romance. Julie Ann sent me What Lovers Do, which is a friends to lovers romance. The hero sadly finds himself in the friend zone, even though he wants more, but the heroine just doesn't want to date. And then I also got this little novella from Ilsa Madden Mills. She sent this with Beauty and the Baller. It's called Very Wicked Beginnings, which is part of her Briarwood Academy series, which I haven't read yet, but it's about a wealthy football star and a wicked ballerina from the wrong side of town. I also bought myself Fall Boys by Penelope Douglas. Of course, I had to get their new release. It's the first book in the Hellbent series, and I loved it so much. I was so happy to be back in this world. It's a spinoff of the Fall Away series. It's about the second generation, like the kids from the original series. But Aro and Hawk were amazing. It's a bad girl, good boy kind of romance, new little romance. I also got myself Hate by Tate James, which is the first book in the Madison Kate series, which is a fantastic reverse harem romance series. I read the series and loved it last year. I've been slowly collecting the series, and now I just need the fourth and final book. And I also got a new to me author, The Love Interest by Kaylee Loring. The author is an Asian romance author, so I wanted to try her out and support her. It's a rom-com between a professor and student and she's also a historical romance author. It sounds great and it's also on KU so even though I got myself the paperback I will probably end up reading it on my Kindle. And then the last few books in this haul are all my non-romances. I got this paperback of The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. It's a fantasy book but I think there is still a romance here. The heroine gets kidnapped to be sacrificed for the king. She ends up getting saved though and part partners up with the hero to try to stop his brother from seizing the throne. I got this pretty package from Wednesday Books. It's for the new PC cast and Kristen cast book, Omen's Bite. It's been a long time since I've read these two though. I used to read the House of Night series, but this one is a new series, The Sisters of Salem, and it's about two twin witch sisters. It came with this candle that sadly broke, some matchsticks, a bookmark, and this card. I'm not exactly sure if it's YA or adult, but probably YA. I got this new edition of The Hobbit and it's got some pretty gold foiling on the cover. It's the 75th anniversary edition. This is the paperback for A Good Day for Chardonnay by Dorinda Jones, who I love, though I have not read the series just yet, but I do love her Charlie Davidson series. This is the second book in the Sunshine Vikram series, which is a mystery series. I got Under the Golden Sun by Jenny Ashcroft, which is a historical fiction book. It's set after World War II. A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft, which is a fantasy book, like a romantic fantasy. I also got Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter, which apparently turned into a Netflix series. This one is another mystery thriller from the author. And the final book in this haul is The Unsingable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. I actually used to read this author. I read two of her young adult books a long, long time ago, of course, but this is one of her adult books. The heroine is a musician who has a breakdown and ends up reconnecting with her her father while on a cruise. Actually, I think this might be Jennifer E. Smith's very first adult book, so that's exciting. And that is it for my giant book haul. Let me know your thoughts if you read any of them or if you're adding any to your TBR because so many of them are on my TBR, on my endless freaking TBR. I hope you enjoyed this video though and I will see you all next time. Bye!